The COVID-19 outbreak in Italy has put 60 million people on lockdown, and some are worried the U.S. is on a similar trajectory. The first case of coronavirus in the U.S. not linked to any foreign travel. This picture has become a symbol of the toll that fighting coronavirus has taken on Italy. A two-minute rest for a nurse who has worked 10 hours nonstop. In less than three weeks, coronavirus overwhelmed the healthcare system across northern Italy. So how did the country go from confidence to quarantine? Hey guys, I'm Dina, and I'm going to break down why the coronavirus outbreak is so severe in Italy and what the U.S. can learn from how they're handling the pandemic over there. So by mid-March, Europe had become the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic. And on March 19th, Italy's death toll surpassed China's, with over 3,400 deaths and more than 41,000 confirmed cases. But how did it all get so bad so quickly? Let's back up. On January 29th, Italy detected and isolated two tourists from China as its first coronavirus cases. Contacts were traced, and Italy cut transportation links with China. On January 31st, Italy's Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte said, the system of prevention put into place by Italy is the most rigorous in Europe. But on February 21st, a 38-year-old man checked himself into a local hospital in the region of Lombardy. He had tested positive for COVID-19. It turns out the outbreak had already been circulating locally and unnoticed for weeks in northern Italy. With no lockdowns or social distancing enforced, Italians were still on the streets, and there were mixed messages from politicians. For authorities, it was a balance between keeping the public safe and preventing panic. By March 11th, Italy had the second highest number of COVID-19 infections outside China. Confirmed cases were increasing daily, and the country was unable to slow the spread of the virus and reduce the number of people seeking treatment. Scientists searching for patient zero now believe COVID-19 could have reached Italy from Germany rather than China. But why have coronavirus fatalities been so high in Italy? Well, for starters, Italians were late in taking the threat of the virus seriously. The governor of Lombardy initially said the novel coronavirus was just a little more than normal flu. Italy did some things wrong, much like other countries are doing things wrong, in the sense that it was very late. Uh, elected officials and just regular citizens really downplayed the threat for a long time. They just weren't taking it as seriously. Italy also has one of the oldest populations in the world, and we know that those over the age of 65 are among the most at risk from coronavirus. In fact, coronavirus has killed 5% of known cases in Italy. Morgues are at capacity. Makeshift emergency units have had to be assembled, and masks, hand sanitizer, and disinfectant are running out. Because of the delayed response, the healthcare system is completely overwhelmed and no longer has the resources to treat every patient. This means doctors are being forced to make brutal and heartbreaking decisions on who to treat and who is beyond saving. In a desperate effort to stop the virus from spreading, the Italian government restricted all movement in Lombardy and surrounding provinces, including the cities of Milan and Venice. Police forces were patrolling the roads and giving fines to anyone who entered or exited the quarantine region. Two weeks after northern Italy had been declared a red zone, Prime Minister Conte said the peak of the outbreak is yet to come. Il paese ha bisogno della responsabilità di ciascuno di noi della responsabilità di 60 milioni di italiani che quotidianamente compiono piccoli, grandi sacrifici. By mid-March, all of Italy was on lockdown. Even though the situation in Italy is dire, the country is in some ways better equipped to handle the crisis than the U.S. In fact, compared to the U.S. response, Italy has a number of key advantages. First, Italy has a national health care system. This means that all primary and inpatient care is free at the point of use, funded mainly through taxes. It's actually ranked second best in the world. Italy's National Health Service covers all citizens and legal foreign residents. Even though the health crisis is similar, the system in place is just it's been there for decades and people know they can rely on it, people know they can get tested, they don't have to worry about whether they'll get a test, they don't have to worry about whether they'll have to pay for it. If they do end up being hospitalized, they don't have to worry about paying for it or getting a bill later or getting bankrupt. In contrast, access to healthcare in the U.S. isn't guaranteed and Americans have to have some form of insurance to get basic care. But many in the U.S. are uninsured, like 28 million non-elderly Americans. Many others are underinsured, meaning they don't have enough insurance. Now, Congress did pass a bill that allows COVID-19 testing costs to be covered for everyone, including those without insurance. But should you test positive, any necessary treatment will not be covered. 
Then there's the question of unpaid leave. The U.S. has a weak social safety net, meaning many Americans simply can't afford to stay away from work. Second, Italy's far more prepared when it comes to testing for the novel coronavirus. Italy began swab tests early on in the outbreak to monitor the virus. The WHO provided test guidelines that the U.S. turned down for a CDC version. And by the way, that CDC test kit initially failed to accurately record the virus. As of March 17th, Italy had carried out just over 2,000 tests per million people. But getting accurate numbers for how many Americans have been tested is surprisingly difficult, convoluted, and not transparent. Since conducting their first test in January, the CDC reported the U.S. had carried out 125 tests per million people as of March 17th. Finally, the Italian government quickly introduced an economic support package of nearly $28 billion. The money was used to assist the National Health Service and to implement measures like boosting unemployment benefits. The U.S. has injected over $110 billion to help boost the economy during the crisis, but is still deciding how exactly to assist Americans facing unemployment and healthcare shortfalls. So the protections that the U.S. is enacting as an emergency response to a pandemic are standard in the Italian system. When you have so few protections for workers on a regular basis, it is really difficult to build a system out of thin air and ramp that up overnight. And so that is, I think, the fundamental difference, not, not just between Italy and the US, but really between any country with a solid welfare system, any European country. Italy just happened to be the one that you know, was hit first. US COVID-19 case predictions appear to be rapidly catching up with Italy's and by some accounts have overtaken them. So with Italy being a glimpse into the future, what can the US learn from it to take steps to avert the crisis? I'm staying home is the new motto in Italy. The government's emergency measures ban all but essential travel and public gatherings like grocery shopping. So people are finding innovative ways to stay entertained while social distancing. Italians are taking coronavirus seriously, with 89% of those polled supporting the government's crackdown. In fact, 78% say they would back even tougher measures. And one measure that's common in countries that have managed to control the spread of the virus, like China, South Korea, and Iceland, is rigorous and expansive testing. But to suppress and control the epidemics, countries must isolate, test, treat, and trace. The best way to handle a pandemic, other than acting quickly, is to have a solid system in place. This means having things like a healthcare system that grants universal access without economic barriers to people seeking care, and a social safety net that allows people to take the steps needed to slow the spread without losing their livelihood. You could potentially massively increase the number of testing, and I think they should, but the overall picture of, of the system we have in place, that unfortunately is not really something you overhaul overnight and, and kind of the middle of a health crisis. I think it's something that we, you know, we should consider and keep talking about as we go through this and, and afterwards. And having a sense of solidarity also helps. There is a lot of solidarity between Italians right now on a kind of like personal level, neighbor to neighbor. You've all seen the videos of Italians singing from their terraces and giving themselves like, you know, appointments to, to meet at 6 p.m. every day to sing the same song and, and things like this. The things that matter have kind of like reduced in a way. Money has been the priority for in, in the US for so long that it is so hard to think about putting that on hold and actually care about just people first.